some unnecessary buffs and changes. Mm. So just quickly before we get into our editing max here, this video does include two games. I highly encourage you to watch both as they are both pretty good games. Um, I am going to try and keep the video as short as possible by adding speed ups and things like that. But we will just have to see how it goes. You guys can no know better than me because you're in the future from my perspective. But anyways, enjoy. Need a DPM buff, and let alone a huge one. Yeah, but... Right. In a way, I get what you're saying, Jonty. Because, yes, in a way, it's like... Why, why do the tanks that already have... Their best stat... Why does their best stat need buff it, buffing? It's other things that need buffing. But then, at the same time, if you make every tank good all round, it kind of loses some of the, like... The, the the speciality of, of some of the tanks. Fuck. I've committed now. If you know what I'm saying. So, if, if you buff a tank's strongest point, then at least you're keeping what's unique about it. That would uh, that would be my counter-argument, but I'm probably just playing a bit of, like, devil's advocate there. So I'm going to be really sad if he hits this. Oh, that's non-destructible. That's interesting. I did not realise that's non-destructible. Did you guys know that was non-destructible? Because I sure as hell didn't. Oh shit, sorry. I wish those were saying sorry. I did not mean to do that. So if we just pause quickly and take a look at the map, bring up the red arrow, we can see that our team has lost north. This means there might be pressure coming into our base uh, across the AB line. Also means the enemy team are probably going to move in towards the middle of the map as the majority of our team is currently clustered there. We do have a grill and an STRV um, over on 1-2, but that's probably not going to last too long. So I've dropped down out of the middle of the map to now try and wrap around and try to finish off 1-2 lines. So then we can kill those guys, turn around and face what's coming from the north because you don't want to be caught in a crossfire where you've got enemy vehicles coming from the north and south and you slowly run out of angles to work with. Speaking of STI. We can get like a nice little track off here or something. That'd be fucking beautiful. Hmm? Where's he coming? Uh, 
That's not the droids we were looking for. That was just rude. That's unfortunate, man. I'd probably die to Artie here. I will just clarify that now. I think the play here is cap. Try to make them come to me. I fucking tried. That's why I said that's why I was like pinging the grill that he needed to be closer. Oh yeah, I wasn't capping really with the intent to cap. When it got close, it was like, yeah, we're probably not gonna do a lot more damage here anyway, but I just wish the grill would have been covering me, because then I could have at least had a go. It's also annoying because if 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 I'd have known that the IS4 wasn't gonna aim at me. I would have actually aimed my first shot a bit better, so possibly pen the eyes for, then when he fires and then I kill him. But I thought he was going to aim at me, so I was like, right, fuck it, just get the shot in. But, yeah. So, poor decision making on my part, but not too bad. And we're up at 94%, so also not too bad. So into the second game, and there was a couple of games between the last one and this one, so if all the numbers don't line up, that is why. Now, we've got Malinovka, Tier 10 game, and as I've said before, when looking at this kind of a matchup when I'm on 94 plus percent, my first objective is to try to retain the mark. I don't want to die doing zero damage and have a massive drop off down to back down to below 94. So there's kind of three options. I can sit, I can camp either in the base or more in the forest around the mid and hope that we get some spots, get some shots. But 
I feel like that's very game state dependent. If the enemy wins really quickly, we could then get spotted and die quite quick without doing anything. Or if our team really uh, wins really quickly, we're then playing catch up the entire game. So I'm going to take a little bit of a risk and go up to the hill. With a couple of teammates of support, I feel like we can, using the DPM of this vehicle, at least trading two for one against most things, which we should be able to. I should be able to do at least two, two and a half, three K damage, even if it doesn't go that well. Lot of enemy team, the enemy team going to this position here. Is that A5 going to commit under? He fucking is as well. Oh, 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 that is a ballsy move. It's not really paid off, is it? I definitely could peek this and shoot the EBR, but also I kind of want to get up because I kind of want to make sure that we get the windmill. Hey, don't call Cow Chamster nice. He's usually mean to me. He's just trying to prove a point today. Fucking tail. Oh, okay, I'm still spotted. 100%. Didn't think I'd still be spotted. I have absolutely no idea what Max is yapping about. Do you ever? Do I ever? Wow, I hit those. Where we're at the point now of the mark where like one spot on like the grill or something. Well, timing. Or one tracking shot on the grill. Could get us the mark. This game's going way too quick. Oh, I'm fucked. Two five seven kills me, I think. <laughs> Point nine nine. <laughs> no, it actually fucking killed me. Oh, why is the shark gone that way? Oh, it's fine. We got spotting anyway. It was calculated. It was calculated. Don't worry about it. Nice. That was not an amazing game to get the three mark on, but... As I said before, chat, mark is mark. So, on to the ratings really quickly, and if we start off with overall tank rating, I've gone for a 3 out of 5 for the um, Type 61. I think it's a good tank, I think it's a solid tank. Is it any higher than a 3 out of 5? No. The gun, I mean, it's a decent gun, because it's the STB's gun, but just a lower tier, which means you do have the issue of... Worse gun handling, you know, worse aim time accuracy, everything like that. On top of an already not 
perfect gun, as you will have seen if you've watched my STB video. Um, but in saying that, it is still a good, decent gun. The mobility is not too bad. Obviously, this thing, one of the biggest issues with it is it has no armor whatsoever. And probably one of the biggest things on top of that is it does have a big cupola on the roof, which becomes a problem not when it matters because, oh, well, why does it matter, Max? Because if you're exposing your turret, you're just going to get penned anyway. But it means that if you're poking over a ridge line, enemy tanks can shoot you before you can shoot them. And sometimes that can be really, really important. With that being said, ease of marking, I've gone for a 4 out of 5. Um, fairly easy mark, to be honest with you. It wasn't too bad. 3.2k average. I think in my marking session, I only played about 14, 15 games in this thing. Um, granted, it did. I did start around 85 or whatever, but from 85 to 95 and 15 or so games, that is really not too bad whatsoever. I've had a lot, lot worse. Overall, like I said, the tank's pretty decent. This is kind of along the lines of the KV-13 um, video as well. The tank's pretty decent. The mark requirements are quite low, honestly. It's not too bad. Like, it's fairly easy to mark. I wouldn't say quite a 5 out of 5, just purely because tier 9, the mark requirements are, you know, a little bit higher than, say, some of the mid-tiers. And then for the marking experience as well, I've gone for another 4 out of 5. Again, similar kind of lines, not really a lot more to say here. It's a decent tank, and the mark requirements are pretty low. I, I genuinely found it quite simple. It wasn't too bad, like playing the tank, you know, I could average some decent amounts. You've also got the nice thing that you've got. It's got good view range as well, so you can complement your damage with a bit of spotting if you struggle a little bit. So I honestly wouldn't say it's that bad. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I still haven't even released the first video of this series yet in terms of my timeline. Uh, obviously, you guys watching this, I think this is the fourth or the fifth video. Um, but please do leave your suggestions if you have any in the comments of the ways to make this video, these videos better. Um, and I will get around to doing them um, whenever I catch up um, with the editing and with the releases and stuff like that. And Please make sure you subscribe if you like the videos and you're not already. Give the video a like. And other than that, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.